Hello, niggas and bitches. Welcome back. I am Erica Alexander. And I am Amber Riley. And this is The Read. Thanks for coming back. Yes. Thank you indeed for returning to our program, to our ghetto slice on earth. Let us get started with the usual. It is Black Excellence time. And this week, we're giving it to the first ever Black-owned bank in Minnesota. The whole place? Okay. The whole place. Amen. So First Independence Bank is an institute based in Detroit, and they've expanded into Minneapolis now. And it says on because of the weekend.com that Minnesota has some of the widest income gaps in the nation and a long history of discriminatory loan practices that have disproportionately affected Black families and stunted Black wealth in the city. Because, of course... Right. Shocker. Of so course. it's up to niggas to do something about As it. As always. <laughs> Excuse me. It is up to strong, powerful <laughs> black people <laughs> to do something about it. As usual. So um it says here um that the vice president Damon Jenkins said, you know, we we're really going to be a servant to the community, and what that looks like is really striving to build stewards of Banking. I'm reading that there was a local nonprofit called Project for Pride and Living that got the building donated to them by Wells Fargo, and they decided to lease the bank to First Independence and lots of other helping hands locally that got this whole thing done. I personally have spoken on the podcast before about my banking horror stories. Mm -hmm. You have. (laughs) Passionately and at a very high volume. You have. And so... um, I'm extremely happy to spread news of Black banking expanding around the nation. Congratulations to them over at First Independence Bank. Yeah, it is a wonderful thing. I love Black banks and I love this for Minnesota. So congratulations. Yes. Shout out to St. Olaf. Shout out to Rose Nyland um, and everything else in Minnesota that is real and exists and is awesome. Amen. Now... Let's get into the pop culture segment. Hot Tops. Doctor Strange and the multi Multiverse Bottoms of Madness. And you know I don't know who that is. <laughs> Magic White Man. Sure um, he is. <laughs> part of the Marvel Cinematic Society. And um, not the one that dated Taylor Swift, as we previously discussed. But that's not... How come he's Doctor Strange and not Doctor Average? Because he's strange. But what does he do that's strange? Magic. He has strange magic? Like he invents poisons or something like that bitch in the Wonder Woman movie? Invents poison like that bitch in the... What bitch in the Wonder Woman movie? Remember the Wonder Woman movie where it was like somebody in Germany? The bad one. The bad one one had invented some kind of gas. Oh, so so she had invented some kind of gas that was like going to change the course of the war or something and they had to go stop her or he, may, he taps into other dimensions and uses powers to make magic oh no this spells. bitch can't even imagine that he's okay. a sorcerer all right all right got you he's got all a whole right. cape and everything i don't remember this nigga but i will look him up <laughs> so good for him <laughs> Anyway, so this week in our pop culture so the met gala was sunday mm-hmm. none of my business not many strong opinions. I did peruse Almost the none. outfits <laughs> and become Andre Leon Talley spiritually as I do every year I because pee. it makes me feel fancy and spicy and special. And sometimes I do it with a glass of wine. Okay. But then again, I do many things with a glass of wine. Uh, so that said, um, any strong opinions? Um, I really loved Cardi's look. Really loved Lizzo's look. Yes. Yes. Um, Blake Lively, even though she got married on a plantation, I thought her dress was genius and the whole like reveal when they <laughs> when they unfolded her dress and then also switched out her gloves. Thought that was also iconic. Man, um, I didn't see all that. Oh God. I should send you that video. It's so good. But um the dress is gorgeous. I'm just not excited about the person inside. Overall, um I can't too. yeah, I can't think of too many things. I loved Rihanna and Zendaya weren't there, so that changed a lot of what would have you know that says a lot about it the, does. it's kind it of defining does. for the entire event it does they're gonna pull that up. changes a lot for me especially because i don't know these white people and y'all know i don't know these white people it's a lot of 
So oh, if white people look good, people. right, it's yeah. very difficult for me to identify them. As far as on the, um, ooh, girl, you could have kept this side. Amy Schumer and that coat dress. Let's, before we even do that, okay. I also would like to just say, <laughs> okay. Cardi, gorgeous. Lizzo, also gorgeous. Janelle, gorgeous. Oh, yes. Janelle Monáe, incredible as dress. always. Yes. Uh, Vanessa That's- Hudgens, Moschino. Yes. Looked so good. Lots of people I liked. Rihanna actually was present in the form of a, a CGI statue. statue As she should Presented have been. <laughs> by the Met uh, Museum and Vogue. Yeah. And it was like a whole marble statue that yeah. was remade like her most recent pregnant Vogue cover. Absolutely. And I'm just like, yes, this is, this is it. <laughs> this, this feels right. Yeah. When can we go and visit it? And, you know, I don't real. know, Mm-mm. lay flowers in front of it or whatever. God, I, I just, I hope she's yeah. doing well. And they said, like, we know you miss your queen of the Met. And so, <laughs> yeah, here she I'm is for Instagram because know. we know that y'all feel this way about her. But I completely agree. Janelle's up in L.A. Um, and has a mighty baby. Janelle always Dang. looks incredible at the Met. She always is just like. Or they, I'm sorry, I'm not sure which uh, set of pronouns is the most correct, but yeah. Janelle always kills it. So, yeah, I Jody agree. Tyson, man. Yep. I don't know what Nikki had on with that leather baseball hat, but um, between it was just that it was just the hat for me. It didn't I even, make, yep, like, it was I just wasn't the even hat. mad at like the yep. glittery tits and arms. Not at all. The tits and biceps with all the not glitter at over it. all. Didn't hate that. It was like the, the dress hat. and pants. It was just I didn't need the hat. And it was the fact that she said on the carpet, like, or when she was talking to Lala or whoever, like, oh, I would have never worn it if they told me I couldn't wear the hat. And it's like, but they told you you couldn't wear the hat for a reason, sister. Because, like, the fact that it even came up <laughs> was like somebody <laughs> trying to get so much you. better without it. So I'm not sure why you, you like ran for it, balls to the wall anyway. But, Nikki, Amy Schumer, and uh, Lala. I said online that Lala's outfit looked like a collaboration between Bridgerton and Sheehan, and I'm sorry because the girls did not appreciate that. <laughs> the girls said a black designer made her outfit, so I needed to shut the fuck up. But it did still look like if the colored cast of Bridgerton got a BBL and decided to go to the ton. <laughs> And y'all were mad, but it was what it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was what it was, and everybody is just gonna have to be okay with it. So okay. sorry, Mr. Laquan. I actually really did like Lala's look. <laughs> I really loved it from like the titties up. I thought it was so fun. I really enjoyed it. I hear you though. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but other than that, I feel you. I wish that he had took her hat off. Didn't see it. Chris Jenner looked like Betty Rubble inside of a chitlin. <laughs> Didn't, it was a chop for all her kids for me. <laughs> Correct. Um, but Amy Schumer. Oh my God. What a fucking wreck that was. What do you have on? Now I know that we have dragged this lady <laughs> front to back and left, we right, have. and center over we the have. course of this entire show. Yep. But I'm just going to have to do it again because Absolutely. I'm tired. I'm tired of her pulling up and just like going out of your motherfucking way to just be downtrodden and, and just look just unkempt and homely and That's a mess. Right. What in the fucking Dementor chic was this? What is this cut? <laughs> what are these tassels in the front and these goddamn, this fucking Paul Bearer ass button and these, Listen. what are these sleeves? Why do you have on Ray-Bans? What the fuck are the, where, what is this right. open toe situation with these goddamn unpolished toes? Yes. Like, I just, I, it's like, you do all of this shit to look like a villain on fucking Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and then and then you make just months and miles of content surrounded by oh, look at me, I'm this white woman who's just, just like oh, I'm not society's idea of such and such and such oh middle God. fingers to do number two. But you don't even try. You don't even try. You don't even try. Oh my God. Yeah, that's true. And like, even the ladies on Chip and Dale, Gadget, 
and Clarice and the rest of the girls. Even the girls had some fucking mascara on. Even the girls put on a little <laughs> bit of blush, a little bit of lip gloss. Even the girls went and stepped out on the goddamn mat without some polished toes. Like, but honestly, all those things I don't care about. It's more that Amy Schumer is dedicated to doing the absolute goddamn least and daring you to say something about it if she does. That's my part. Yep. I don't like if you if a beat is not Kylie, your situation, Kylie, that's up to you. Kylie. Fuck oh this. God. No, I don't even like this. I don't even know why this bitch is in frame. Link what do like, you mean? <laughs> the way Lick is like, girl, it's my time to shine, and you know that. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you were literally doing fine. <laughs> Do you have something to fucking say? You enjoy what Amy Schum look, you like this dress? <laughs> she said, of course hell you no. fucking <laughs> Sit your ass down and mind your goddamn black ass business. <laughs> As I was trying Not to say, my bitch really getting down. <laughs> If a beat is not your situation, bet. Fine. If it's if if like a full cunty yeah. uh, situation is not you, fine. It's my thing is it's the whole like dangling in your face the like <laughs> privilege of being a white woman and having the range exactly. of being like I meant you to say something to me at this yep. whole event where we're supposed to say something about what you got on. Yep. Chop. Stop it, please, because you look the fuck crazy. Okay, so I think that just about covers my feelings about the Met Gala. I mean, I did see an interesting tweet from Wiz Khalifa who said that he couldn't go to the Met Gala because they were scared he was going to smoke on the red carpet. Did you see that? No, I did not see that, but I can understand why they felt that way. He said they were scared of me smoking on the red carpet at the at the event, so no Met Gala. I don't blame him, but weed is legal, dude. Sheesh. He said... Okay. Someone said my ass would be ash in the wood on the red carpet, to which he said, I did it last time, and they freaked out, apparently. No wonder they course. won't let you come back. Nigga, really? You smoked on the red carpet? The red carpet is the most visible part of the entire event. Why yeah, wouldn't you just wait? Did it. <laughs> oh, girl. Oh, oh okay. and here's a photograph of him at the Met Gala with a... <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> packed up. Not even lit yet. Please, I hate to see where white people are coming from, but you could have waited. That could have waited. You needed a blunt that bad on the carpet. I refuse to believe it. I mean, it's just like, it's a whole part of her aesthetic and personality at this point. I believe Wiz Khalifa also has his own strains and other, you know, endeavors in the cannabis business. So it shocks me not at all. Neither does it shock me um, that it was any kind of a reason for them to say to this white man, I mean, this black man, please don't ever come back again. Um, but you yeah. know what? I'm just not Are shocked. Are you good? Are uh, you all right? Do you fucking need something? Are we going to be able to make it through tonight? No, she said you won't actually. <laughs> and to leave her the fuck out of the rest of it. <laughs> Sit your motherfucking ass down. You're going to pay attention when she says to and not one fucking moment sooner, so... So, uh, I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it is just weed. But, girl, go and sit down some goddamn where you sit up underneath growling? the goddamn mic doing all this what growling. What did you do? Because somebody is outside the goddamn door. <laughs> <laughs> do you not see me in, in full production of a thing here? And does not care. What? You Don't try and come and get close to me now. Get your ass from by me. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Let her live. Free link. <laughs> okay, anyway. Anyway. It is just weed, though. Like, I saw... It is. It's just weed. Actually, I'm not even going to do that. I'm not even going to go there. Okay. Did you see that Tory Lanez got detained for weed in Vegas? And released, like, three hours later? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I saw that. But weed is legal in Vegas, so I'm confused by that. Which is what I was saying as well. Like, far the fuck black American be it for me to defend this motherfucker. Far. It's like... Very far. 
My question was, how much weed did she have on her? Because you know the rap motherfuckers will literally carry oh, around yeah. extra large glass they will bags cartel amounts of weed. With kush. Yep, they and will. giving like no sweetheart. I know that you have probably been to the past eight Rolling Louds, but this is not a normal <laughs> everyday thing that you can do. <laughs> They said it was a large right. amount of weed that he had in his bag or okay. whatever. Which again, I like, girl. I don't really care, but it's Tory Lane, so whatever it takes to send me to jail, <laughs> I'm fine with. But that. at the same time, yeah, if we're gonna detain her. Let's detain her for the things. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> like yep. as far as weed at the airport, bitch. I agree. Oh, at the airport, look for bombs. Look for guns. Look for knives. Look for. Yeah. Like, is he offering? Is he offering nuggets to the the pilot? What's going on? I agree. I'm just saying, we can dissect these things. I do, but it's Tory Lane, so. Yeah, so. Send that nigga to jail. Um, so Drake was on Instagram talking about sports, which he's very passionate about, as am I. Yeah. Something that we have Both in common. Of you are super passionate. Um, very um enveloped in the current oh, yeah. National Basketball Association Absolutely. playoffs. <laughs> which is where the basketball girlies play the game um, okay. on different portions of the nation yeah, in a bracket style thing, I think. <laughs> I know. And then they, <laughs> and then they find the baddest bitches and it's like, final. Yeah, they do do that. And then people get pregnant and whatever. You're so right. So, um, niggas were talking about um, Ja Rule Morant, Isabel Morant. <laughs> Leave Ja alone. <laughs> That's a good little nigga. Don't do that. <laughs> they said that they tired of her daddy and all of that stuff being like LaVar Ball types of annoying. Which he definitely and is so- not. Y'all tried it. He ain't nowhere near that annoying. LeVar had to Which, campaign for his kids to be in the NBA. Don't do this. That's a... Don't do this. That man. Don't do this. Even though the AT&T commercial is funny. Have you seen that commercial? No. Okay. It's funny. With LeVar... With LeVar's child, like... talking about doing, yelling at a car? So no, mean? he's inside of an AT&T store, and he's talking about, oh, you know, one day I want to be up there or whatever, and you're thinking, like, oh, it's MVP. It's, like, NBA All-Star or whatever, like list but it's actually AT&T employee of the month and then LeVar walks by and be like my son could do anything and so like it's a cute it's a cute commercial whatever obviously y'all are like sponsored by AT&T and that's fine but don't act like the Ball family and the Morant family have been behaving similarly in public because that is not true. John Morant got there without all of this fanfare and discussion about it without releasing exclusive $200 sneakers or anything else. So, but I mean, you as the sports analyst on this podcast already know that. So I don't even of have course. to break. I don't even know why so, I went into all that. I don't even know why I went into all that detail. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, you okay. Know, yeah, just, some, you know. To let everybody know. else know. So Drake uh, commented the following on the internet, Instagram. He said, imagine your son makes the league and he's Jaw or Mello or Lonzo. All you can do... Ball. Those are the ball children. Correct. Oh, the other two. <laughs> yep. You're welcome. All you can do is be elated and competitive and over-supportive. And it's a rite of passage, too, that the OGs talk shit. I know I'm going to be this way even if my son is in a Rubik's Cube competition. Correct. So, Drake, Rubik's is R-U-B-I-K. Apologies. Yeah. Oh. Um, someone's name. So this comment was then followed up uh by a response from literally some random nigga who said, Your son probably plays with ghost riders. It took me a minute to like get it. Because mm-hmm. like I know that's like, okay, well, obviously he's trying to say that Drake plays with ghost riders. Mm-hmm. But it was like, oh, okay. So it's like, if it's something like a Ghost Riders competition, and what kind of sense does thing? that make? Like, you niggas just be rushing onto celebrities' social to media to talk shit. Yeah, just couldn't. y'all be rushing to do it, and that's why I don't be mad when these niggas clap back at y'all. And what a moment this was. 
And so Drake responded, I just followed your girl because she's probably miserable and needs some excitement in her life. <laughs> Fast forward to this man's wife sharing uh, screenshots of Drake following her, as well as uh, a DM that he sent her <laughs> saying, I'm here for you, ma. Um, and then she Ooh. said on her story, my husband decides to be a troll and now champagne poppy thinking I need some excitement in my life with the creep side eye emoji and then the laughing. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out why what's funny. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Same. Like no follow up doll baby because <laughs> neither one of your pages are blocked and I took a peruse. Yeah. So what's the tea? Like you getting well, on a flight? What's popping? Because I mean I mean, Options. I don't I don't think so. She and her husband both briefly joined Twitter and then realized Twitter is not the one or the two and deleted their accounts because just stay on your side of the fence at <laughs> yep, this point. Just like, stay on Instagram. Different places. Just stay on like, Instagram. Honestly, if you live on Facebook, if you live on Instagram, don't come to Twitter. Because them niggas, they a different breed. And they're it's, going it's to tear place. you up. It is. It's different. They don't care about your feelings, yeah. your history, your blood yeah. Line. Niggas on Twitter read better than what they look. Okay? Niggas, I feel like people who heavily use Facebook, or, and less Facebook than Instagram, especially Instagram. People who strongly prefer Instagram to Twitter, I feel like, how do I say this in a gentle way? Don't. You're right. I feel like are perhaps more conventionally attractive or rely less on their ability to communicate via language skills than people mm -hmm. on Twitter. People on Twitter yeah. have no, they will not hesitate to decimate you niggas. That's why I'm sure whatever that girl was receiving on Instagram was vastly different from what she got on Twitter because she and her husband both deleted their accounts after like a few hours. It was like, oh no, bitch. Oh no. <laughs> We're getting the fuck up out of here. These niggas are not on our side. We heard we was trending and we thought that was a good thing and we came over here and bitch, it is ugly. <laughs> These hoes do not like us, which I mean, I also prefer Twitter to Instagram for y'all get Y'all panties in a bunch. Like, I'm talking about me as well when I'm talking about the uglies, but it is what it is. And so I just really, more than anything, I felt like this is what y'all get. Like, I'm all yeah. for, I'm all for talking shit about celebrities. I don't have no problem with that. But I'm also all for, especially if you comment on the celebrities Instagram, you didn't put this on your own story. It wasn't your own thing where Drake like searched his name and found you talking shit about him. You came to his social media and you had something derogatory to say. I don't think this was on his page. I think it was on like another page that he commented but on. But like some third party. But, yes. You decided to do this outside of your own Instagram or whatever else. So I'm all for these people being like, you had this to say about me, therefore I have this to say about you. And the fact that Drake even responded to you, much less followed your wife, means that y'all's lives changed in that nice. very instant. Like, it changed in that very instant. And if that girl posts something in two or three weeks, talking about she in Canada seeing what the fuck it do, I cannot be mad at that. I can't. Like, I don't care. That's never going to happen. Even if she wanted it to, I don't think that it would. That's I too bad. That, That's too bad for her. And the whole thing is like, it's so silly because it just gave them an opportunity to be, it really did give both of them excitement yeah. in their lives. Y'all got hype. The end. Yeah. But it's like, y'all got kids. If somebody came on your page and was like, I bet your daughter, blank. It don't even matter what the fuck comes out after that. Because... Who the fuck are you? Why are you talking about my kids? I don't See, understand why. So I feel like I read that those are his kids and not her kids. Okay, that's my point. Right. I'm just saying, like, I feel like maybe it might be a little bit easier for her to go off and take a vacation if these are not children she gave birth to. But who knows? This is what I'm saying. It's like, why are we so fast to talk about? You could have easily, if you were going to take a dig at him, there were like, five other streets that I can see immediately that you could have taken that didn't have nothing to do with Adonis. You wanted oh, yeah. to, like... Oh, yeah. Could have. 
explain the whole thing. But since you brought his son into it, he decided to bring your everything into it. And now here y'all are beefing with the whole ass internet. I'd be like, why is this nigga in my goddamn DMs because you on here being stupid? Why aren't you at work? (laughs) (laughs) Say that shit again. (laughs) Why are you not at work? Because I know that li- yeah, that young lady has gotten so many text messages, so many phone calls. I'm sure she's overwhelmed by all the attention from the people in her real life. And meanwhile, she has some very important decisions to make because <laughs> her husband is being very corny on the Internet. So I think she has some she has some very serious matters to think about as she, she won't. I mean, and she won't. But like, honestly, sweetie, you could have the month of your life. If you just let Drake trick off on you for 21 to 28 days and then went back to your regular life, because that's about all it's going to give. But I also see him actually doing it just to make a point, because what difference do it make to him to fly you out and take you shopping and take you to dinner and all that? What is that? One million, two million. I feel like Drake could easily he could buy you a Birkin and not blink twice about it. He could give you a Birkin. He probably got a closet full of Birkins for hoes that he really likes. And he just pulls probably. one out and gives it to you that yes. is still in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> he don't even he take it out. keeps a spare Birkin. Absolutely. In his back he got a closet full of. And then just the, for when the, he's Yes. Five. The label for the closet is shit hoes like. And it's just all kind of shit. It's Tatcha skincare and <laughs> Sephora gift cards and Birkin bags. And a and a thousand dollar gift card to Shein and and another one for Fashion Nova. Like I feel like Drake could easily have you like I don't. I mean y'all are y'all are married and I don't understand loving nobody that much. So I'll leave it at that. But there's that. If I were you, sister, me as I am, pure nigga, I would absolutely be responding to that DM to like like what's up? Here go my TSA. <laughs> Here go my KTN. Here go my Delta frequent flyer <laughs> account number. And let's make this shit happen. Get me out of here. Absolutely. Get me the fuck out of here. Rapper Young Thug has uh, strong opinions about um, having children in the in America, in the world, um, and how... Our finances as men um, relates to it. I'm going to let him just speak for himself for a bit because it would be foolish of me to try. Okay. Um, All right. Go for it. God needs to set some rules, bro. We need new rules. We need new oath, bro. If you dick broke, if you a broke head nigga, you should not be able to nut because you bringing poor kids into this world. Fuck, nigga, you making niggas rub and kill and steal because you running around. With no type of career, no nothing. Having kids. Now your kids growing up won't shit. Your kids growing up looking at Thug and his game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop it there. If you a broke ass nigga, you should not be allowed to nut. <laughs> to nut, period. That's so like. That's impressive. bold. That's bold, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that's like 98% of men on the planet. <laughs> All right, buddy. What? All right, I'm not gonna argue. Who are me? Who is I'm? <laughs> I would just like to say I really hope that we can get to a place oh where God. we understand that um, money, financial support alone, does not a good parent to make. Correct. Absolutely not. You can be broke and be excellent dad you won't be an excellent provider <laughs> you know to be maybe not it'll be harder because mm-hmm. you need money to provide all but kinds but that's of not things. necessarily your fault that's it, that is my thing it's like we consistently like beat up on <laughs> The broke nigga, That's knowing right. that there are systems in place to keep us broke. Although there are many niggas that are out here that are broke, including ones that y'all deal with that are not doing anything, uh, are not attempting to do anything about it, which makes a huge difference. Yep. Um, but it's like a lot of y'all 
get money. Yeah. But then you're horrible people. So it's like, <laughs> what <laughs> difference? Right. That's why I'd be so conflicted. Exactly. That's why I'd be like, that clip was funny to me. But it also, like, on a fundamental level, I don't believe in restricting people's access to reproduction because of how much money they make. Like, fundamentally, I'm against that. But also, men are horrible. So it's like, well, I'm not going to take up for y'all because y'all are trash. And the ones with men m- with money and the ones without still don't be taking care of their kids. Like, y'all still don't be doing the amount of work that the birthing parent does to take care of these kids. So it's very difficult for me to stick up for y'all when y'all don't be doing what y'all supposed to do, regardless of income. It's a very small amount of male partners who be equally contributing to the household, the finances, and the effective and useful method of raising children compared to those who don't. And I mean, that also goes for the girls. Y'all don't be doing the greatest job with these kids either, but at least y'all show up. These niggas be opting out. And like, even a lot of you rich niggas, especially you rich niggas, you be like, Having eight kids in different eight different houses, yeah. And think that because Future, you pay child support or whatever the fuck else that you were just a solid all the way down. No, when three quarters of your goddamn kids I don't even remember what the fuck you look like. Because like, how the <laughs> fuck can you possibly be a solid, right. present, emotionally right. supportive dad? You literally cannot. All across the country, it's you can. You can take care of them. You can call. You can you know show up. And you won't be absent, but it's like y'all be bloating or glo- bloating. Y'all be gloating about like the type of dad that you are because your yeah. kids, you know, have designer clothes yep. or they just don't want for any, you know, material thing and they ain't hungry and all of that other type of shit. But it's like, no, girl, it's not enough. And as someone who never wanted for material things, I can say that like the way you parent your children emotionally matters so much. And I know y'all pretend like that doesn't matter, but neglect affects children in such a profound way. And I'm not going to get too deep into school because I could easily do that. But neglect is so difficult for children in a way that is different from abuse because other people don't see it. When you are abused, other people, when you like literally don't have food, your clothes are dirty and you got holes in everything, like people at school notice When you are emotionally neglected at home, your teachers frequently have no idea what's going on with you. Other adults in your life frequently have no idea what's going on with you. And so for y'all to pretend like money is all that matters, especially when most of y'all don't even have money, it's crazy to me. Y'all don't even have money. And yet y'all be like, oh, I take care of my kids. I pay my child support. Your kids need you. They need your involvement. They need to know that you give a fuck about them. They need you to uplift them and care about what they're into and support them as the people that they are. It's hard work, which is why y'all need to not be having kids until you're fucking ready. Y'all are not ready to be having these kids. And then you have all these fucking kids and you do a horrible job of raising them and the cycle continues. But, okay. That's all I had to say about that. Yeah, amen. So... The Netflix is a joke festival is happening. It is. Uh, you know, we're in it. Buy your tickets. Yeah, we're there this <laughs> weekend. Um, <laughs> I am just having a day. Not girl. just saying like, Netflix and the TV cutting on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so. No, I'm into it. I just want to go to sleep. Like. I just want to go to sleep in a casket, preferably. Anyway. <sighs> Anybody else? Anyone else? Anybody else have a thing? <laughs> I just love that you said it. And Netflix was like, oh, yeah, girl, we can open right on up. <laughs> that ain't no problem. <laughs> Who was talking to? All these goddamn apps and yeah. and, and do dags and do hickeys and, and what's it? listening to me and talk to, like bitch I'm not talking to you god that was hilarious <laughs> I'm not telling Dwayne to cut that out either so Dave Chappelle was performing at the thing of the oh day. no that's where he was the blank festival <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles 
on this past Tuesday. And he was towards the end of his set when some man, I think he goes by the name Isaiah Lee, rushed onto the stage, tackled Dave Chappelle, and then promptly got all of his African ancestry stomped out of him. He did. Right there on stage. Yep. All of the black beat right on off of him. <laughs> um, he was arrested, uh, charged with assault with a deadly weapon uh, because he apparently had a oh my God. replica handgun on him that contained a blade, like a sharp knife blade. Right. A 23-year-old man who apparently also raps because of course he does. Um, anyway, they beat the everlasting nigger off of him. Of course. And <laughs> uh, then the set was completed. Uh, Chris Rock was, of course, there and came out on stage and said, was that Will Smith? Crowd roared. Um, apparently, Jamie Foxx also came <laughs> up on stage. Uh Buster Rhymes, because they all... I guess this nigga got jumped by Dave Chappelle, J.B. Fox, and Buster Rhymes, it sounds like. Well, I mean, why did I think it, it was security? I thought it was security. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, well, no, it sounds like security was involved as well. Okay. But the gotcha. way that it was discussed afterwards mm-hmm. made it sound like um, Django and Busta Bus got their licks in as well. But who knows? Either way, when I saw that nigga on the stretcher afterwards, this Isaiah Lee character, his arm looked like a fucking Xbox controller. They reconfigured this nigga's DNA, his molecular structure, because his goddamn arm, they said, give me an S, and they got their S. (laughs) So... Yes, cheer. Thoughts? I mean, I saw the photos of this man who allegedly, I'm not sure if these were real, but I saw a photo of somebody with a very scrambled face who did this. Um, And on the one hand, Dave Chappelle has said so much stupid shit that I am not mad at anybody for rushing the stage. At the other hand, this is not some local club with some unknown comedian. And you had to have known what could have been a possibility here. As much as I'm a proponent of like whooping ass and fighting under certain circumstances, like you had to have known that this was a possibility, especially at like, this is a Netflix sponsored event. Did you think you were going to be able to rush the stage with Dave fucking Chappelle, who's like a complete asshole when it comes to a lot of issues, but like, it's still a massive committee. Like, did you really think you could do this without consequence? Well, it sounds as though this person is not well. Oh, okay. Mentally. Oh, I, mean, I didn't know I'd that. have to guess. They, they even, like, it seems like they had a song from two years ago named after Dave Chappelle. Oh, damn. Okay. So, I don't know what this person's going on, got going on okay. upstairs, but I want to assume that that was not yeah. considered. Um, okay. I didn't know that, but... <clears throat> But if that's the case, then that just makes it all the more tragic because then I really don't know who to talk to about why this happened. <laughs> why was this allowed to happen? Yeah, I don't even know. I mean, well, it's this is my thing again. Like, this is not the first, second, third, 400th time that someone has been able to bum rush a stage. It happens. It should not happen. Right. You know? So... I'm not really interested in too much back talk about, you know, you, th- this being attached to the Oscars or, right. oh, we have to protect Dave Chappelle because he's a genius or anything. It's like, whatever needs to be in place so that yeah. people stay the fuck seated. I know that Dave Chappelle apparently has like loads of security and whatever. That needs to happen. Because for me, it's like, this seemed to be completely unprovoked. Mm -hmm. And this person had a weapon on them, which is also like, how? Right. I mean, it was a, it was, I guess it was a, 
a knife disguised as a gun, which still doesn't make sense as to how exactly. they exactly. How did They're you saying even it wasn't get a that real gun, venue? but it was a replica gun. They're so gonna be it, checking you niggas for way, the rest of the weekend. Watch that. They're gonna be checking y'all for the rest of this fucking festival. Absolutely. Now I gotta get felt up. Because these, <laughs> I gotta go down to. I don't even know where the fuck we're performing because it's probably not the same venue. But either no, way. it's not. I don't care. I just don't understand. We tighten it up, stay seated, girlies. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah. If you don't like what the person on the stage has had to say, you are, are almost you certainly perform uh, um, permitted to leave. Absolutely. Um. And at the very same time, if you tell jokes, you can uh, evolve your way of thinking with the times and also not be a flaming piece of shit. I think both of these things can exist. Yeah, I mean, that is true. I don't know what his set consisted of that night, so I can't even comment on whatever he was talking about. I mean, and and really, Um, I'm not mad at anybody being mad at Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle has said some horrific things. He said things to be mad at. And the fact that he came back and was like, oh, not you... Not rushing with a blade. Like, I, right. And after that whole situation was cleared up, coming back and being like, oh, that was a trans man and having a bunch of people laugh at that because they know about how the trans Ex- community has exactly issues with you. That's exactly my point. That is what is Thank so you. fucked up. That is what is so fucked up about the situation. Like, you still decided to take this moment to poke fun at trans people. Like, oh, trans people are mad at me because I'm openly transphobic and I still get millions of dollars. Like... I get why niggas are mad at you. And at the same time, I fully get why you cannot rush somebody at a show like this and not expect for security or that nigga's friends to beat your ass down. Like I get, I get both sides of it. I think that person was not necessarily wrong. Like I would also in a fair and just world want to confront Dave Chappelle about the shit he said. But if you come at somebody with a weapon in public, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't even want to say nothing that could be construed as taking Dave Chappelle's side in things because I feel like he's so frequently incredibly wrong about shit. I mean, don't be an asshole, but also, don't be an asshole. <laughs> you know, like, the, I'm just saying, asshole, like, there's no way asshole. you think you can rush a nigga on stage. At a fucking Netflix festival and think nobody is going to hem you up. There's no way you think you can get away with that. And so when you said this person, you know, maybe has some other mental health issues we don't know about. I was like, okay, that makes a that makes a lot more fucking. I mean, okay, I mean, maybe, 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 but right. That makes a lot more sense to me because. I feel like the people I know who are anti Dave Chappelle would have simply never gone to a Dave Chappelle show. They would have never paid money for that ticket. Even if they got gifted a ticket, they would not have gone because they don't even want to be in a room with that nigga where he can make them mad. So Maybe cussed him out in passing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the same way the rest of us would have. And he would have kept walking just like his security. Nobody would have done anything until it turned physical. So, I mean, I don't know, child. I, I get it, but I get it. So... (laughs) <laughs> as, amb- as ambiguous as that is I do I get it this bitch didn't got to okay that's it for Link the said vibes. you will pay attention because to her because I'm just like I'm, I don't even <laughs> she's not even talking to me because she fucking knows yeah better. but you better go so, talk to her because she has something to fucking say <laughs> that's it for the hot tops take a break and then whatever comes after that the latter part yeah that all right Hey, y'all, building an online presence can feel very daunting, okay? It's difficult to create a website, manage sales, engage with your audience. All of that is a lot. Lord knows, Kip Fury and I have been through all of that over the past nine years of doing this show and even before with building a presence online. And we both know the first step is just getting started. And with Squarespace, it is super easy to do, okay? Squarespace is the only All in one tool, you need to build your brand and grow your business online. You stand out from the crowd with Squarespace's beautiful website templates and video studio, which lets you effortlessly create professional level videos to tell your story and grow your audience. And Squarespace will also help you stand out in the inbox, okay? They can help you out with eye-catching email campaigns that can turn your subscribers into loyal customers. They can help you add online booking and scheduling to your website. 
which takes the hassle out of coordinating calendars and, of course, they make it incredibly easy to build and tailor a website to exactly what you need. So to get started, go to squarespace.com slash read to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, use offer code READ to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, Kate Fury and I have both used Squarespace, both for our personal websites and for this is the read.com. Nothing could be easier. So head on over to squarespace.com slash read and use offer code READ to get started today. Let them know Kate Fury and Crystal sent you and let's get back to the show. We are back, ladies and germs. Mm-hmm. And it's time for us to read your letters. It is. Send your questions to askthereed at gmail.com and we may read them aloud on the show. We have an update this week from Donnie. If you remember, Donnie last week was the 27-year-old black gay male who lived in Houston and his friend Montel was constantly sending him his selfies trying to get him to gas him up about how fine he looked and everything else. Um, yep. That was a spirited discussion. <laughs> and Donnie said, hey, y'all, a few things. Montel is not my best friend. He said, no, I'm right. sorry. He said, Montel is not my best friend. Mm-hmm. But we've been cool for a few years. And also, ever since I said that, that nigga has not asked me to prove his picture since. And all is well between us. Thanks for the right. feedback. Love y'all, Donnie. And I'm so glad it worked out that way. I had a feeling that uh, Montel had several other potential sources <laughs> to help I gas him you. up. Absolutely, he did. And so I'm glad you didn't have to, you know, be outright rude like I would have done, apparently. <laughs> That's what y'all <laughs> let me know, that I would have been a bitch. But I mean, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like we would have cut way deeper. Yeah. Did this bitch just cut and paste the last goddamn shit she sent me to say? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Give me a technical break today. I am just trying. I'm trying my goddamn damnedest. Fuck. <laughs> okay, so we have a, a letter this week from Danielle who says, hey, y'all. I'm going to have a breakdown. I'm going to lose it. This I'm is gonna a fun question. Lose this it. is a fun question that may be highly relevant. Relevant. <laughs> relevant. <laughs> Leave me alone. We're all fucking <laughs> To crap. what you have going on right now, Danielle says, Hey, y'all. I just want to ask if y'all have ever been too high. I recently... Okay. Shay. That's <laughs> because... What, relevant to what I have going on right now. I mean, per, not, not relevant, but just, you know, maybe you've been too something. Too high, too overwhelmed, too busy, too drunk too apathetic to anything but danielle is asking specifically no, about correct i am doing that mm-hmm. <laughs> but danielle continues i recently had an incident because of an edible where i was uncontrollably shaking and had a panic attack <laughs> <laughs> that was my worst experience ever so i was just wondering if y'all have any crazy weed stories or tips on coming down and sobering up after getting too high Thanks, and I love the show, Danielle. So, sweetie, let me tell you first and foremost, if you wanted tales on a bitch being too high, you came to the oh, right goddamn place. Bitch. <laughs> Get started. Bitch, the way I used to order my edibles from California and them hoes would show up is like... <laughs> Do you want to tell the Sabara story? I will tell from what I remember. and then you can have. Probably, but for those who that don't know so it, ago. right, for those who don't know it, back when I had a job <laughs> and Kim okay. Fury and I would meet. Somebody I mean, else's I, job. Right. You have several jobs. Right. So now I work for myself, but back when I worked for MTV, um, Kim Fury and I used to record near Midtown. And one day <laughs> I got very fucking high before we recorded. Very. <laughs> okay. Are you going to let me tell it or not? Go ahead. (laughs) One day I got extremely fucking high when we recorded. And I don't remember much about afterwards, but there was a Sparrows down the street in like Times Square. And I remember going to the Sparrows and throwing the whole fuck up. Yeah, that one. Because there's only one. But I, yeah. if it's still there, but I remember going to that fucking Sparrows and going downstairs and there being a bathroom and a bucket. And I remember having my way with them both. 
<laughs> I simply threw up. I I'm simply sitting. vomited. I up chucked. On the other side of this bathroom door. <laughs> I took the same edible, so I'm high too, but I took a reasonable dosage. Yeah, not me. <laughs> okay. We were given cookies that we were supposed to eat in quarters. Oh, it was the cookies. Okay. Now, I had a half because I went there, and I was floating in a beautiful place. <laughs> you decided to be bad bitch Wonder Woman, Serena Williams, I'm the queen of the goddamn Correct. world, nothing can take me down, and That's eat right. the whole fucking cookie. I did. I did do that. You're right. And all I could hear on the other side of this door was a volcanic eruption. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> it was violent. And I just remember thinking, oh, what man. do I do? <laughs> <laughs> like, because I have locked I myself have in this, this single stall bathroom. The hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to go in here? Is she is she close to death? What what I don't know what I'm yeah. supposed to do. Apparently yeah. what I should have done was just let you finish. Yep. 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 And because so once it all came out. I was just fine. And so Danielle, I will say in the future, um, if you if you so I mean, I have a lot of crazy weed stories. Skip here is not the only one who can tell you about a time I got too high or honestly too drunk or too anything else. But as far as sobering up after getting too high, I find that to be the easiest of all the substances because all you have to do is lay the fuck down. If you're too high, yeah. all you have to do is sit down or lay down somewhere, periodically sip a little bit of water, maybe eat you something. It is not going to fuck you up the way the rest of the drugs will, the way alcohol it will. It shouldn't. It might, like you might have had too much weed to the point where you throw up involuntarily. But otherwise, if you're you too high... You might also wake up high. <laughs> that's also possible. But nine point... I'll say 9.7 times out of 10. If you are... <laughs> so if you're... It is. But if you're around people you trust, you're around your niggas or whatever, and you're mm -hmm. like, bitch, I'm so high. Everything is moving. The whole room is moving. Bitch, there's stars everywhere. Your niggas should sit you down. More than anything, yes. you need to stay yes. in one spot. Have you some water? Feel free to yeah. close your... You need to be safe. You need to be somewhere safe. Yeah. Whether that's home alone or under the supervision of somebody you trust. But all you need is just sit there and let it wear off. And you'll be fine. You literally just need to be still, preferably while you're asleep. And hopefully, you know, you don't have a bunch of mental health issues that push you into doing that sort of thing again. Unlike me who has a bunch of substance abuse problems, but, um, well, yeah, okay. that's my, that's my best advice for sobering up after getting high in particular is like just getting somewhere safe. Even if that means calling an Uber or a Lyft and going home and locking your door and being in your home by yourself. Once I'm at home or once I'm with people that I fully trust, I don't have to worry about it no more. I know I'm good. I can have my water and lay the fuck down somewhere, sit down somewhere, and it's fine. But it's not just that incident at Sbarro's for me. Unfortunately, there was also a time where there was like a 50, there was a 50 milligram. <laughs> there was a 50 milligram edible that came into play, which is truly outrageous. And your bitch probably ate 42 of them 50 milligrams. And you, you have calmed down. I mean, yeah, and I mean, we still get high. Oh but yeah, you used to be like correct. That's right. Like that's right. Double fisting, absolutely. Blunts, sure did. Full rot like sure did. That's right. Literally a pot head, yeah. and I was a huge pot head too. And I still, because I was just, I can't keep up. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm never going to catch up to that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just yeah, like that's true. fuck it yeah right i think your so, advice is spot on yeah i just honestly if your friend is too dependent on substances they probably have substances they probably have a lot going on 
Um, whether they can tell you about it or not, that's definitely the case for me. I had a lot going on. These days, I drink a lot less, although I'm still an alcoholic. I smoke a lot less, although I still be getting high because, bitch, I'm never giving up weed. Um, so, yeah, that's my advice for sobering up. Uh, more than anything, make sure you're safe. Just make yeah. sure you're safe. Even if you are violently sick and you are throwing up for the rest of the night or whatever, make sure you are at home alone or around people you trust more than anything else. Because the rest of these niggas will absolutely take advantage of you in your lowest moments. That's true. I agree. Yeah. I would say the exact same thing. I think that if anything, age and drugs have taught me, it's um, do it. If you're going to do it, do it with people that you trust yeah. will have absolutely you back. make sure that you're safe and yes. take care of you it's not there isn't i mean i haven't tried all the girls but like yeah no not of all. what i have tried there ain't one worth you know what i'm saying yep. you being unsafe or being in an unsafe predicament or whatever girl if you're gonna try it try it with somebody that you trust and if nobody that you trust does it maybe you don't need to be doing it either. amen and that's just it that's very true. If this you're around a bunch of people you don't know, don't get too high. That's my no. advice. No. Know your limits and stop right there. Don't be like Julian Real World. Drink you some fucking water and <laughs> and sober the fuck up so you don't act like that stupid bitch. Just sober the fuck How up. How are we still here, Jules? Exactly. <laughs> we will talk about Real World another time, but yes. like Ooh, so good. It's a mess. Um, but yeah, girl, I you said you were uncontrollably shaking, had a panic attack. I wish that was my worst story. I wish. <laughs> it has gotten very bad for me, but yeah. Um, even when I'm you're fucked up. Shakes. Yeah. Even when you're fucked up, just try your best to take care of yourself or to be mindful. Set plans in advance. If you know, like, baby, I'm going through a breakup. It's the end of the semester. I don't get along with my parents. Mother's Day and Father's Day is coming up. Like, if you know you're going through a lot and you're ready to get wasted, tell somebody that you trust so that they know to look out for you while you get yes. wasted. Um, and other than that, have fun. And I hope you live to see the next day. There have been so many nights, honestly, probably more than not, where I've woken up and been like, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been like, yo, are you dead ass? I made it through that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I had maybe like no, I had a couple of, of morning morning afters oh, this yeah. past year alone. Oh yeah. Well, I'm like I was just like Are you kidding? At my big age. <laughs> at my big age. <laughs> I know my Not heart knowing is like... how the fuck I made it back in this bed, but I did. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. Yes, my heart has been like, bitch, are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. So um best of I'm luck. A professional. <laughs> best of luck to you and everybody else. And when I say people you trust, I mean people you have known for years, not niggas you've known for like three months. Yes. Not like somebody that you just started hanging around with that doesn't immediately seem like a ball, you know, a bold dumbass. Yes. Like we're talking about like Your people friends. that you have the experience right. with that you know. Will yes. care for you. Yes. Down. Preferably, preferably somebody you're not sexually attracted to. That because too. that can really color your perception. <laughs> yes. Just so, be safe. Like, yes. Ain't nothing wrong with having a good time and partying. And nothing stuff like at that, all. But it's not worth something bad happening to you. Whether it's someone else having something bad to happen to you, or you just waking up in a you know yeah. a dump somewhere. Exactly. Like, Cause my friends don't know this and they're going to forget by the time it happens. But when I turn 40 in September, we're all going to get very fucking high and watch acrimony and they're going to be irate. I feel like there's so many. Nope. We're doing it. Do no, nope, we're absolutely, we're doing it. It is. Milestone. And we're going to do it. And I don't understand <laughs> why all, we should have to do that to ourselves again. That's just same that's world? just part one of an incredible weekend we're going to have. But everybody's going to get high and watch that movie. And we're barely going to get through it. The subtitles are going to have to be on because oh, knowing me and my loud ass friends, alone. everybody is going to act up. Is alone. <laughs> I don't know if I can read this. <laughs> 
But anyway, best Why of luck. Why didn't they just cast somebody <laughs> we'll who didn't never know. have... We'll never know, friend. <sighs> How All did right. she get on the boat? We'll never know. Twice. <laughs> but but best of luck to you, Danielle. Um, hopefully, Taraji's being fantastic for <laughs> Hopefully that so helps you. Hopefully that helps you to stay sober. Um, throughout your, throughout your journey, or at least stay safe. Our next letter comes from A, as in A, baby. And A says, Girl. I've been dating this man for almost four months. Neither of us were really pressed about being in a relationship when we met, but our feelings naturally progressed and we got closer than naturally. we ever intended to get. We was dating exclusively, having sleepovers twice a week, spent Valentine's Day together, flowers, and all that other shit, telling one another... Having sleepovers? Oh, yeah, twice a week. Hmm. Telling one another things about ourselves we haven't felt comfortable telling anyone. A month ago, I casually brought up us basically being in a relationship and just not calling it that, and he admitted that that was true and said he needed time to think about it. (laughs) I didn't really, yeah. I didn't really pay that too much mind until two weeks passed. <laughs> Good you. Two weeks have passed, and he still has not brought it up again. So I asked him. <laughs> no, it's not funny. I asked him what he's thinking so hard about, and he admitted <laughs> to me that he has been talking to his ex. He swears, oh. he swears it's not about them getting back together, and he knows that they don't work. What the fuck is it about? But his ex is going through a tough time and he feels like he needs to be there for her because she doesn't have anyone else. He got very emotional. What? He got very emotional and said that I deserve better than someone who won't cut off their ex and then ask me for space and time to figure all his shit out. Okay. It's been about a week since I gave him all his space (laughs) and time. (laughs) So you're ready to get right back into it, huh? And I'm starting to get How nervous. How much more space and time you need? <laughs> and I'm starting to get nervous that he is never coming back to me. Oh, no. Should I continue to be patient or just take this as a breakup and move on? Thanks, y'all. Mm-hmm. Love, A. Well, A, let's get you to Z. Um, Amen for that. That nigga is gone, sweets. Yep. And he's not coming back. No, he's not. And I think that you're going to graduate to a place where you will see in in your side of hind that... Okay. <laughs> That's not what it's called, but all right. That it was, <laughs> it was all... I'm gonna let you at it. For the good. All for the best. Because maybe one of the truest things that that nigga has ever said to you is that you deserve someone who is not still talking to his ex mm-hmm. or just being an all-around random clown. Amen. Um, I don't know what the fuck she could be going through that she don't have nobody but her ex to talk Correct. to Correct. about it. But this is not a her problem. This is a him problem. Um, to be honest with you, she, she probably, the thing that she probably needed help with was deciding whether or not she wanted to watch The Housewives of Atlanta or Salt Lake City or Jersey. Like, <laughs> this nigga's a liar. And so it sounds to Woo! me like you're a sweet person um, with, you know, a big, open, vulnerable heart and maybe... You know, he was doing, you know, the nigga version of giving you um, your papers. Now, what he should have done was say, I'm going to go over here, entertain my ex, yep. continue to ruin their life. Absolutely. And along with some other person's life, because I will date someone besides my ex while I continue to entertain my ex. That is not you. I'm just going to go and be some other host. Yep. So, um, good luck in life and all your future endeavors. Right. Um, don't bother calling me or looking out for my call. <laughs> 
It is unhealthy <laughs> and it is not going to happen. This is what should have happened. I don't know why motherfuckers be thinking that leaving the crack, leaving the door cracked open a little bit is supposed to be like yeah. kind or yes. soften some sort of blow. This yes. nigga is gone, sis. Mm-hmm. And it's you're all the better for it. I'm concerned that that a week has gone by and you're looking around. Yeah. For reconnection. Yeah. Get back in that dating pool, baby. I would agree. Or don't. No, I mean, so sadly, hey baby, I would agree. Um, I don't think necessarily No, baby. No, I won't even say that. I was about to say, I don't think it's because of his ex, but I actually do fully believe it's because of his ex. Not because of her, but because of his feelings for her. I believe that he's Mm. truly deeply in love with her. And all it took was a crumb of attention for her, from her, to pull him back into her. He desperately wants it to work out with this woman. But that means, A, that it has nothing to do with you. It's not that there's anything wrong with you. I don't want you to internalize the idea that there that you were oh, somehow yeah. an insufficient no. partner. Because sometimes no. y'all feel this way when y'all get left for other people. But I feel like him telling you, you know, <clears throat> the truth is, is that I've been talking to my ex. You deserve somebody who will cut their ex off and is ready to do that. I need space. I need time. And he hasn't texted you since. Let me tell you who he definitely has been texting. <laughs> Let me tell you who he definitely has been calling, popping up, taking out, being a support system for and all that. And you deserve all that shit. I mean, I'm just saying, because you're talking about, I mean, you're talking about it's been a week of space and time and you nervous he's never coming back. (laughs) No, you're certain. I just, right. That's the thing. Like, I said this on Twitter last week and I felt like the girls were very upset with me for it, but. The truth is that you run the risk of being hurt in any dating encounter that you have. You run that risk regardless. This person could meet everything you want on paper. Everything could seem perfect. And yet when you get together and you enter into a relationship, it might not work out because people are people and you never know how shit is going to go. This man was honestly more real than most. Because he said, I've been talking to my ex. You deserve sure. somebody who is going to cut their ex off. That's not me. I need space and time to figure it out with her. The with her maybe wasn't vocalized, but it's implied by the I need to I needed to figure this shit out. What else is there to figure out if it's not figuring it out with her? That's where his heart really is. And I'm sad for you because you really like this man and you care a lot about him. But at least you have been given, you have been given so many signs that this man is not ready to commit to you. And so as much as you might like him and you might be nervous, he's never coming back. Honestly, if I were you, I would be more nervous that I'm never, I would be more nervous about my capacity to move on after him than whether he's going to come back. Because niggas come and niggas go. But yeah. you have to be in a place, and this is what I said that the girls did not like, you have to be in a place where you are ready to take care of yourself regardless of what happens with these niggas. Regardless. And like that? Yes, honestly. It could be a situation where everything works out, this is your you husband, like and y'all are, yes, I literally did. I was like, you have to be in a place where you are ready to take care of yourself <laughs> no matter what. Like, that's true. Maybe this relationship is the one of your life and y'all end up married and happy, like just fucking joyous. And y'all have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and y'all die when y'all are 101 and everything is like ideal. Or this is really fun in the moment and it taught you some lessons and you move on, which is much more likely to be true. Yes. And more than anything, more than anything else, You need to be able to take care of yourself in a breakup, regardless of how the relationship ends. I'm not saying you're going to deal with it the same as like a nigga you was talking to for six weeks versus somebody you were married to for 50 years. Obviously not. 
but you still have to feel confident in your ability to take care of yourself. So when you say, should I be patient or take it as a breakup and move on? Baby, if this man was thinking about you, he would not let a day go by without texting you much less a week. So I definitely think you should take it as him saying he wants to rekindle things with his, with his ex and see how things are going. I, if I were you, I would move that nigga to the back, back end of the roster and focus on people who actually are in a place where they are Take ready to de- I mean, yeah, but like if you want to think about him as like, you know, maybe some dick when it comes to November, October or some shit, maybe. Mm. But if I were you, I would focus on if you if dating is mm. what you want to do, I would focus on moving forward and finding somebody who is ready to date me. Summer's coming. Now's the time. It is. This is your, your like, girl, it's suit. early May. Now is the time. Like, this nigga set you free just in time. You, yeah. It's time to start wearing less and going out more. That's the thing. This nigga set you free at the perfect time. Now is the time to go out and have a good time. Be drunk, be high, be stupid, be belligerent, do dumb shit, meet niggas, fuck niggas, move on to another nigga. Like, now is fuck the time. Niggas, get money. Yes. Absolutely. Now is the time for all of that. So if I were you, I would focus on that. Um, and if this nigga come, come back around at some point in the future, maybe we can have a conversation. But that's only because he was honest with you about how he felt. The rest of these niggas be yeah. outright lying to y'all or ghosting y'all or whatever else. This nigga said, future I Future would have waited till y'all fought at the baby shower. Right. I was going to say, Future would have waited till you were eight and a half months pregnant. <laughs> And they stretched you out all the way to the delivery room. So I don't think he's necessarily a bad guy, but absolutely, A, focus on you and have you a good-ass time because it's niggas out here who are available. This one ain't one of them. But there are niggas out there who are ready to love if that's what you're looking for. I almost sang in Diary. I'm so glad I did <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, what a song that is. <laughs> Good luck, girl. Yeah, best of luck to you, sister. Um, Go shake that ass somewhere. Yeah. As you shake move forward. Ass, and let me see what you got. Come here. Oh, Come here. What is Linkiana doing? Hi, boo. Hi, sister. Demanding that I throw her donut. What's next? <laughs> Did you order donuts? <laughs> <laughs> no, her little stuffed donut. Okay. Oh, okay. I was about to say, did you order like Cafe Du Monde and then didn't give her none? Because how dare you? She fucking but... wishes. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a letter this week from Carnation. And Carnation says, My boyfriend's name is Cornelius. These okay. are fake names, obviously. And we've been Okay. <laughs> We've been dating for about a year and a half, and three weeks ago, he relocated from Georgia to the DMV to be closer to me. Long distance was killing us. So since he's been here, we've enjoyed seeing each other more frequently and spending more time together. My boyfriend doesn't really know anyone here, so I've encouraged him to go to places after work so, so he can make friends, because making friends as an adult is such a struggle. He said he'd think about going out, and we hadn't talked about it much since I first suggested it. But then today he texted me and said, hey, babe, I just got home, but I RSVP for this Greek mixer, so I'm going to go by there and I'll call you when I get back. Mm-hmm. I thought that was odd because my boyfriend always calls me when he is driving home to decompress as he told me about his day. And I tried to brush it off, but it kept bothering me. So I did my Googles <sighs> and found out that this mixer is a Greek singles mixer. On Eventbrite. In my mind, it makes no sense for him to go because everybody Uh, in attendance will be in a flighty mood and seeking potential matches. I mean, that's what a singles mixer is for. Yep. Last I checked, we are still together, happy and healthy and in love, so I'm very confused and honestly a little hurt. I don't know how to bring this up, and I would love some advice on how to navigate this. He'll be out of town this weekend for work. And I'll be meeting up with some friends who are back in town for the weekend. So we probably won't see each other again until our next date night next week. Still, I love how Link is like, bitch, break 
up with him. <laughs> Link was, <laughs> Link's not having it. But anyway, Carnation says, I would love any advice on how to navigate the situation. And thank you. <laughs> Link said, leave that nigga. Don't, don't believe that nigga. Leave that nigga. Don't believe that nigga. Leave that nigga. Don't believe that nigga. Hey, leave that nigga. Don't believe I just can't with yeah. my life, right? Yeah, you and you and Link both cannot. So, um, Carnation, was it? It was. Um, it sounds like your nigga made a decision. It does. Um, and it sounds like the decision he made is that he's single. Oh. So. Well. From there, it sounds like you need to update your Facebook status. <laughs> I don't know. Because, girl, like, you don't go to, okay, niggas are not going to a singles mixer to make friends with other niggas. They're not. They're not. You're absolutely right about that. Okay. You're and the girlies are not right going down that. to the singles mixer to make friends with no niggas. Or no bitches. You don't go to singles mixers for anything other than like potential romantic to potentially contestants. not be single. Exactly that. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> and I want to believe that you're not a motherfucking living dumbass. So that said, <laughs> what yeah. exactly are we doing here? Yeah, I feel for you because. I can see how, you know, maybe, especially if this is, Carnation didn't specify, but if this is Cornelius' fraternity and this is like their event. I was wondering. I can see that I could, but the fact that he omitted the detail of it being a singles mm. event and that it was like, because I feel like if it was completely on the up and up, why wouldn't you tell your partner, yo, the bros is having this event, I'm gonna go. It's a singles thing, but I'm going to be pouring the drinks. You know, feel free to stop through or whatever. Like, why wouldn't you just say that? I don't even buy it. Update us and let us know if that's his crew. But I don't, I feel like it's not. Because I it's feel like if it not. was, you would have said that. Exactly. And B, even if it was, then why the fuck you needed to go to a singles mixer to, to, to connect with them? Them niggas don't do nothing else around town for you to go and be like, what's up? That's also you know, a valid and, point. And, and do whatever you're... Yeah, community service and shit. Them niggas be cleaning up the highways. Signs or your calls. <laughs> niggas be doing all that shit outside like, of mixers. If you are Greek, isn't that like the whole point of pledging a fraternity is that like you will have brotherhood yeah. wherever you go? Yeah. I mean, as far as, or I, as, far as I know, right, as far as I know, I would not know for real because I'm not in one of those. But me, like me either. But I'm just saying. But I like, assume it's like a a nationwide network of niggas for you to connect to. Yeah, for you to connect to. Yeah. So, but like, girl, they wouldn't do nothing. <laughs> they wouldn't do nothing else. They didn't have a highway cleanup. Fucking buy it. They wasn't volunteering at the nursing home and shit. Like, I'm trying to think of what the Greeks did when I was in college. And he just he he just like. Happen, yeah. To and leave out tell the singles, you singles part of right. the mixer, and it wasn't like, oh, babe, we're gonna be at such and such bar from seven to ten. Come through. It was just like, oh, I'll be there and I'll call right, you back. Mm, right. That's right. very suspicious, if you ask me. So mm -hmm. the fact that he'll be out of town this weekend, let me just tell you right now, Carnation, that would not stop me from having this conversation with this nigga. <laughs> Oh, at all. And at perhaps all. I'm simply That's why God made FaceTime. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, because I had broken up with niggas via FaceTime before, and I would do it again. And I would absolutely yeah. have the... I mean, it wasn't ideal, but it had to be done. And so, yeah. I mean, I'm not even saying you have to break up, but we definitely finna have a very difficult conversation. Because oh, you're going to have to answer You're going to have to... Yep, you're going to have to answer my questions. Because what I'm not going to do is spend two, three, four nights alone 
wondering about what the fuck you was doing until you come back to town and we finally get the chance to talk about it. I'm not going to do that. Do yeah, I simply won't do that. So I'm not I'm saying, yeah, shit. I'm not saying you have to break up with him, but if I were you, we would definitely have some sort of video chat in the next 24 hours about what was going on and another much more serious chat once he got home. And from there, I would be, I would do my best to listen to myself about what my intuition is telling me about what this man means. Sometimes we want to believe what people say because we want to believe that this relationship can work. We want to believe that like him moving from Georgia to another state for us wasn't in vain or whatever else. I would listen to what this man is saying and determine whether I really believe him before I decided to continue pursuing a relationship with him. Because otherwise, it's simply not worth it. If I don't trust you, it's not worth it. And also, and also, okay, I feel like a lot of these niggas, okay, when they move into a new town, have to fight back their carnal urge well to say where the hoes at <laughs> all of them <laughs> not all of them because I feel like many, many niggas 99.7 are out of the place, place. <laughs> you know what I mean but a good correct of niggas correct correct can't really get to move into a they cannot be like you're right friend what's it hidden for out here yep exactly that. now some niggas are good enough and mature enough to fight temptation because we're always going to have it. Male, female, mm-hmm. non-binary, Correct. non-conform, whatever. Everybody. Is. If you have sexual desire, yeah. you are always going to be tempted. Yeah. Okay? So that's always going to happen. It's what you do with that based on the parameters of your relationship. Exactly. That matters. Exactly. Okay? And I don't know, lying that you go into a regular, regular ass mixer that actually happens to be a mixer where the host shall in fact be at. Yeah, I'm pissed about that. And don't play with me. No, not the way to go. And don't play with me. Exactly. Um, so best of luck to you, Carnation. Please let us know how it goes. That is going to wrap up our questions for this week. If you have one for us, please send it to asktheread at gmail.com going to take one more quick break and be right back certain people just make my life so much easier i don't know what i would do without them currently i'm not talking about my dog even though link Link is like currently harassing you but i love it (laughs) but typically she does help me out by being emotionally supportive with her presence and her regal beauty even though she shades me all of the time amen it's almost like her growing business. What it is, not sure. But she makes a lot of money and she's incredibly <laughs> rich. And she tells me that it's very difficult to hire um, staff as often as she does. Um, so she uses this beautiful application piece of software called ZipRecruiter because mm-hmm. it makes hiring so much easier for her because she has got work to do, bitch. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash the read. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. So when Link gets to running these puppies Mm -hmm. for their coins, she knows (laughs) that she will be taken care of at her headquarters because she has used ZipRecruiter to get the right team together, girl. ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that makes it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And who has time to waste? Not Link. No. In fact, the hardest thing you have to do is to remember our special... That's right, bitch. Our special URL, ZipRecruiter.com slash the read is where you can do it. That's where you go to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right. Tell them, girl. Get your coins in, sis. <laughs> Once again, that is ZipRecruiter.com slash T-H-E-R-E-A-D. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to what? <laughs> to hire. <laughs> and let's get back to the show. All right, so we're back, and it is time now for the read. Yay. Shout out to Link. I could not live without her. <laughs> what an icon. 
I have no idea what her fucking black ass was. What a fucking icon. She knew her name was being used in advertising. And she was like, bitch, I will be heard. (laughs) Okay, that's enough of that. Beat it. We're done. Go. The joke's over. Get away from me. Go sit your ass down over there. Baby, this is Link's episode of the show, okay? Um, Bye. You have, you were Woo! so good until this week. I don't know why. Okay, That's my bye. girl. That's my girl. Okay. This week, I do not have much to say. Okay. All I wanted to say, I literally don't this week. Okay. I just want to say something that we have said a million times over on this podcast. Stay out of people's pussies. Um, oh. mind your own fucking reproductive Ooh, system. Thank you, friend. Is my one and only feeling this week, girl. Um, I don't understand how, <laughs> how yeah. God has blessed this rock to spin around for as long as it has. And here we are on volume 2022, mm-hmm. post Christ. Exactly. Still talking about this? Mm-hmm. Your it ain't your body. What the who did what? I don't understand why we're still doing this. I don't understand how many times, and all of these sociopolitical conversations, we have to keep banging our heads against the same wall and demanding basic, humane treatment. Yep. Of living people. I don't get it. Especially in the realm of, like, abortion and the rights surrounding it. Yep. It always gets back to me again. Y'all don't give a fuck about these babies. No way. If they come out anything but white, if they happen to be queer, if they happen to be disabled, if they happen to be trans, if they poor. Yep. You don't give a fuck if they live or die. So what the fuck? (laughs) So what? What? Yeah. And like the meme that I saw that I have seen a few times this week that's like, or not a a quote, not a meme, but whatever. um, It's like, basically, if you feel like like women, people, only have the right to abortion mm-hmm. when they are in a situation where their body was taken from them or something like that. Mm-hmm. Then you're telling them that they only have a right to their body when it's violated. Woo! All right, friend. Come on. Preach, preach up. And it's like, that is so wild. It is. it's true. If you're saying to me, well, okay, if you're raped or like, I don't know, wild cult incest or some shit like yeah. that happens, then we can talk about it. It's like, well, then, yeah, you're, you're basically saying to these people that their bodies are only theirs and they have the right to it if and when they are violated, which is sick. Right. What the fuck? Why? Why are we talking about this? Yeah. Elon Musk out here buying um uh do Twitter and shit like that out from under the girls and shit like that. And y'all out here talking about some goddamn well, that Roe v. Wade thing never sat right with me. It's what honestly, an embarrassment. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I'm done though. I mean, I'm so glad you brought it up because obviously it's a huge news story and. Um, greatly affects a lot of the people in my life. So, um, it is incredibly monumental. And at the same time, I feel like this conversation is so stupid because if you don't want to have an abortion or if you don't believe in abortion, then simply don't have one. You can just not have one. It feels so simple. You can just not have one. And if you're not capable of carrying a baby to term, then you could be more discreet about where you deposit your baby batter. You yeah, could simply also, be more careful would... about where you nut and to whom you nut. You could just yeah. be careful about what you do. You could have conversations Lots of things about do. the people you're with before you take off condoms and stop the pill. You could know the person you're fucking 
know whether how they feel about having a baby. Like this is all possible if y'all are just willing to grow up, but it's not about growing up. It's about policing the bodies of people who can reproduce. And then y'all turned it into a civil rights issue talking about, oh, well, black women have three times more abortions than white women. Baby, that's for, first of all, that's for multiple reasons, including <sighs> income discrepancy, access to wow. health care, access to wow. sex education in the first wow. goddamn place, access to resources and wow. support. And, and then also, importantly, but perhaps not as big of a factor, the simple desire to not want to have a goddamn baby. Wow. All of that is very real. <laughs> And y'all turned it into a, oh, black birth rates are declining. Everybody's birth rates are declining because the young people see how y'all are doing this fucking world and they don't want no parts of it. And they for damn sure don't want to bring their kids into this shit. Why don't you just preach today here? Young people see it. Young people get it. And that's why they're not in no fucking rush to reproduce because the world is hell. Y'all won't even acknowledge that climate change is real. Have babies for what? <laughs> so the sun can burn them the fuck up in 17 years? Y'all don't acknowledge the realities of this life and want people. And that's another thing. Y'all want everybody to carry these babies to term, ignoring that black women have. I think black women, we, I think we have like three times the abortions that white women have. But we also have like three or four times the number of pregnancy complications that result in death that white women have. So like. Maybe address the structural inequalities there because it's not our bodies are inferior. It's that medicine treats us as though we are inferior. So maybe address no. that. Y'all don't give a fuck about taking care of these kids once they come out of the pussy or the incubator or wherever else they came out of. Y'all don't give a fuck about Medicare, Medicaid. Y'all don't care about daycare assistance. Y'all don't care about food stamps. Y'all don't care about supporting families. Y'all don't care about fair and... um equitable, affordable housing. Y'all don't care about safe streets. Y'all don't care about good schools. None of that shit. It's just this idea of, oh, well, y'all have to continue to give birth because we said so. Girl, fuck you. How come it's an issue that we don't want to carry babies to term, but y'all have not introduced no legislation to where the person who is responsible for our pregnancies isn't responsible financially, emotionally, physically, and everything else from the baby from the day of conception. Because it's not actually about the baby. It's about punishing the people who give birth to the babies. And you cannot lie. And you cannot lie about that. That's exceedingly clear. It's clear to millennials and it's for damn sure clear to Gen Z. They get it. So they fully get it. These young ones are just like, I just want to go to Ibiza and wait for this rock. Period. <laughs> like the kids. <laughs> like, Period. Bitch, we see what y'all set up. And yeah. And y'all see a waterfall. And this explanation of, oh, well, these rooted these um these justifications for this aren't rooted in history. Like, girl, the only thing that's truly rooted in history is white men and what they wanted because y'all are the ones who wrote the books. Yeah, so shit right now. in your own history, sure, that's what mattered. But the rest of us have our own histories that y'all weren't a part of because y'all never gave a fuck about us. So don't pretend like the rest of us need to give a shit about what you care about when we are simply trying to live. And the idea that like, oh, well, people should just stop fucking. Y'all didn't stop fucking. The thing about this is that if this Roe v. Wade law, if this ruling gets overturned, Rich people will continue to have abortions because it was never about abortions. It was about access to it. Y'all are taking it away from poor and middle class people who need it the most. You know who has the most abortions? People who have already given birth to children and know how fucking hard and expensive it is to do that and are not in a place to simply raise another one and at the same time you're asking people to deny a part of themselves that is simply a human thing having sex is human sexual desires is they are human it is a part of human nature to be sexually attracted to somebody else and that doesn't Here's even don't want to fuck you and that doesn't even to take into account the sheer number of people who are coerced, coerced into having sex who are forced 
who are raped, who are manipulated, who are lied to. That doesn't even take into account all the people who had sex with somebody because they felt like they had to or they were lied and they did it under circumstances that weren't completely honest. That doesn't even take all that into account. And more and more, these Republicans in the Senate and the House are saying that, oh, there are no excuses. There are no exemptions for rape or anything else. I don't even believe in that shit in the first place. I don't believe in exemptions for rape or incest or whatever else in the first place, because if you want an abortion, you should simply be able to have one. The argument that people have issues that drive them to having an abortion and those issues won't be cleared up by having an abortion or whatever. They also won't be cleared up by bringing a child into the world who who is being raised by parents who don't want it or aren't ready for it. Yeah. Adoption is also traumatic. Especially when you know their parents gave birth to you and left you outside the goddamn firehouse for somebody who makes $19 an hour to find you and save you and send you off to some white family who then turned around and fucked you up in a whole different way. This is, it's ludicrous what y'all are doing. And at the same time, this is what everybody tried to tell you would happen when y'all decided that Hillary Clinton was not a better option than Donald Trump. And I'm not going back down that road because I don't care to argue with y'all about it. But this is what abortion activists were saying then. And now it has come to fruition. Now here we are dealing with the actual consequences of that election and everything else. And so whatever happens to America, I have to say, bitch, you absolutely deserve it because this country is rotten from the inside the fuck out. It's nasty from inside to outside and back again. People don't deserve it, but does the country deserve it? Absolutely. The poor black and brown people who are just trying to make it in a society that demands that you work two or three jobs anyway because cost of living has not kept up with minimum wage and maybe you're only making $8 an hour, so you have to work 17 hours a fucking day just to keep your kids housed. Like, y'all don't even care about these kids. You can't be pro-life if you don't care about these children having a safe place to live and clean water and food and clean air after they fucking get here. It can't matter until they're born. But we've been saying this for too long, and y'all simply don't give a fuck. Well. So I think I've said all I had to say about that. Um, I also just wanted to say a quick fuck you to Ulta because, girl, I don't know what y'all were thinking with this. Oh, baby. So if you remember back in 2018, Kay Spade died by suicide when she hanged herself. Ulta sent out a promotional email collaborating with Kay Spade, the brand. Um, this was an ad for um, the Kate Spade, Kate Spade, the Kate Spade fragrance brand, and oh, Kate Spade. I mean, honestly, I feel like that's great. But the email says at the very top, the NYC It Girl is back, and then underneath, come hang with Kate Spade. Oh my god! Oh my god! So obviously. Oh. Obviously, it took only a matter of minutes for people to see this and to be outraged by it. And as much as you can argue that, like, people are too sensitive and come hang out is, like, a very common phrase. And it's about the new fragrance. And Kate Spade sold her brand a long time ago before this even happened and all that. Still, still, still. Y'all should have been incredibly fucking mindful of what goes out. And there is no reason that come hang with Kate Spade should have ever been emailed to customers. That should have never even been, that should have never even been emailed within the company. But it for damn sure should have never gone outside of it. Are you fucking kidding me? Nobody said, hmm, Kate Spade, in what way should we be sensitive about Kate Spade and this brand and what happened to this woman? This is not even me dragging y'all talking about Ulta should never be shopped at no more or whatever else. This is not even me calling for whoever made this decision to be fired. It's just more of a think about what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. Because come hang with Kate Spade, really? And the it girl is back? Right. Because let's not forget that part. 
It's so fucked what? up. Like, this is why y'all need a chain of command, not just for approval, but to go back and research things. This is why you need a team. This is why you need assistants who are paid well so they can say, because I can promise you, as somebody who was an executive assistant for three years, if my if I had seen this meeting on my boss's calendar, I would have said, <laughs> uh, excuse me, Dave, let's talk about how y'all should not call this less hang with case fade. Pay your people, sure. treat them as valuable, and maybe you won't make these kind of mistakes. Now all to gotta come out and be like, oh my God, we're so sorry. We literally did not even think of that. Our bad. It's so insensitive. Mental health is very serious and very important. We would not take this lightly. We apologize to everybody. We're going to strive to do better. You could have simply done better from the get-go. This did not have to go out. Just do better. That's all I'm asking for you. And that's it for me and my reads this week. All right. Well, that's it for the show. Yes, it is. Make sure you check us out as this at thisistheread.com. If you are in LA this weekend, come join us at the Netflix is a joke festival. You can find tickets at Netflix is a joke. At, <laughs> joke. <laughs> Not link, look at me and judging. You can find tickets at Netflix is a joke fest.com. And of course, find us on social media at this is the read. Anything else from you, a friend, before we leave? no see you at the show this weekend if you're coming out um should be fun and yeah i don't know have a safe and fun weekend everyone yeah everybody do your best and weekend? what is it it's all right. yeah whatever by the time they hear this it will be so everybody take care of yourselves and we will see y'all next week 